praise the Lord. Once again, it's good to be home. God is good. Glory to God. Amen. Just for five minutes, I'll just invite my wife to share her testimony. And by the grace of God, I'll chip into also just um, a root some few things that God has done to our family. Uh, we, we've been through some seasons, but um, in everything, God has been so good. Amen. We have seen the hand of God at all levels of our lives. And uh, for us to be here as a family is the grace of God. And, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm just so excited about what God is doing. And I believe that uh, we, we are moving in a season where God is just waiting for us to connect to Him. Amen. So uh, I'd just like to invite my wife to say her testament. My wife, um, she went through a very uh, testing time. We are expecting our third born and we happened to, she happened to lose uh, uh, our, our, our third born. And um, uh, it was a very difficult situation. Uh, my wife died for 67 minutes. And uh, by the grace of God, God, God brought her back to life. I was told by the medical team that uh, she's gone and uh, we just call family. But I believed God. I stood on Second Chronicles chapter 20 and I began to remind God of His promises over me, over us, and over the body of Christ and the work she was doing. So, um, when she came back to life, they, they said she's going to be dysfunctional. She won't be able to, to use her brain. Uh, she's going to be vegetative. But the grace is sufficient. Amen. And we're here. She was in a coma for 10 days and then she went through a journey. And we found God. In that journey, God took her to heaven. Yeah. And God took her to hell. Um, she's going to be able to bring everything, a lot of things, but the little she can give today, let's praise God. Amen. 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 And uh, it's just been amazing. You know, there's some things that God does in your life you just don't know. Prior to us going through that, God prepared us, but we didn't know. Because we went through a season where we, we had quite a number of things happening, but God just led us into praying so much. But uh, we thank God. So without wasting time, because I know time is not on our side, just come in front and just give us a testimony of what the Lord has been to your life and uh, whatever. Where you can give it, I'll, I'll be able to forgive. All right. Bless God. Amen. 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 Every time I stand in front of people, I always tell them I am also learning to say my testimony because of what I went through. But I believe that I will share that what God wants me to share tonight. Mm. I am here as a living testimony. Amen. A proper living testimony because of what I went through last year. And... Um, Today it marks like a year and two months. Two months. I'm leaving. I, I actually tell me, I was I was joking to my daughter. I said I'm only one year, two months now, and she keeps laughing when I tell her that. But um, I'm born. I'm born again. Let me say so. But um, my testimony is like I try to it to apostle because I wanted really to kind of like show a little bit of the pictures but okay don't worry it's okay even if we don't preach today that's fine it's fine that's what God has ordained for us amen there'll always be time to preach Well, um, last year, let, let me say, let me start from 2017, the things that I remember, because what I remember most is the in, the before and after whatever happened to me. What I really remember, and I would not even miss out, is the encounter I had with Jesus for the 21 days 
I was in hospital for two months, but I had an encounter with Jesus for 21 days when I was in hospital. So that is much that I really know the before and after. People who saw what happened to me, they would say more of what happened. I have no clue about it. So what I say is like 2017, I traveled, went back home, came back. And when I came back, I only found out and realized around December um, that I was three months pregnant. Came back in September and then in December just to find out that I was three months pregnant. And um, it wasn't something that I was expecting. I have to be honest with you. I wasn't expecting that, but I was just surprised. How come? How did it happen? You know, us ladies, you know, when you lock the door, you use anything that really makes it shut the door and you know that <laughs> nothing else can happen. I've locked the door and you know that you've locked it very well. So it doesn't matter what goes on. In, in your marriage, you know that the door has been locked. And that's how I was. But later on, to find out that I was, I was expecting and I was three months pregnant. And it really shocked me. So, being a child of God, and because before that, we had agreed because of what, how we've had our children. And because I, I had, let me say that, I had high blood pressure. So I've had my two children both premature. And it's, it hasn't been a good time, you know, like you, people have great, you know, childbirth and everything else. I've never had something like great when it comes in those areas. And uh, it was quite a challenge, even my last born, when I had my son, and then we sat down and we agreed, wow, God has blessed us with a girl and a boy. I don't think we need any more. So we agreed and we locked the door. And everything else was going on all right and everything else, but only to realize that in 2017, end of 2017, December, I was three months pregnant. Being a child of God, what do you do next? You start thanking God. God, I praise you and I thank you for the blessing. And we thank God. This is a blessing. Even though we were not expecting that, but we thank God for that. What was the next thing to do? We said, no. And uh, now, the only thing we can do is pray. Because we know when we enter this journey how tough it is. And we are praying. And we are trusting God. Yeah. And honestly speaking, everything else was going on alright. Up until when I was seven months pregnant, then the story began to change. And uh, he tells me that there was a night whereby I know I had a visitation of the Holy Spirit and I had a dream. And the dream, even though I don't remember, but every time he talks to me about the dream, like the whole picture comes back. I remember very well. Whereby <coughs> I had a dream and uh, God took me to a place, it was just like a desert, somewhere else, where by the way, pyramids and pyramids of body parts. And he said, he called my name, and he said, I am waiting for you and your husband to dispatch those body parts. Talk of, think of a human being, every body part they have was on those pyramids. He said, I am waiting for you and your husband to dispatch, to command the angels and dispatch the body parts. And I woke up from the dream, I was sweating. The whole side of my bed was completely wet. 
soaking wet. And then I just woke him up. I couldn't even really tell him, like whenever you tell somebody I had a dream, and the dream was like this, and you know, you enjoy telling the dream. I couldn't because I was just shaking the things that God showed me in that dream. So I said, we need to pray. And we started praying, and we were praying, and we were praying. But to be honest with you, I had, I didn't have any clue of what that dream meant. I didn't have any clue. But I prayed. I prayed and I prayed. And went back to sleep. Just to jump a little bit. Only later on when we were told that my baby had passed on at seven months, I didn't have a clue of it to do with the baby dying, to do that God was speaking to me in a dream and all the body parts, what it means, I had no clue about it. And we went to the hospital, we had appointments, and everything else happened the way it should happen, somehow. But still more, I didn't have any understanding about it. It was still the time that when I was sent to the hospital, they started the process of taking the baby out and I went into cardiac arrest. And in that cardiac arrest and being in hospital and having that encounter, when I had the encounter, he started explaining to me everything else that I didn't even understand that was going on. Who started explaining to you? Jesus. Yeah, that's what you to hear. So, I remember one time that was out of the coma, after I'd come out of the coma, 10 days. I remember him coming every single night for the 21 days of mission. And as I would sit on my bed in hospital, when it comes to 11.30 in the night, he would come and sit right where I was, my feet were. And to be honest, the picture that he showed himself to me is the picture that I've always seen. That was, they show like in the film of Jesus. You see him in a white robe. How I have seen him in the years past, that's how he revealed himself to me in those 21 days. And he would come sit on the bed and explain to me, today we are taking you, I'm telling you and I'm going to show you heaven and hell. And that would excite me really, really much. And what I'm talking about here, all these things were happening in the spirit realm. Nothing was happening in the physical. And I remember the time that he came and took me and said, I'm going to show you heaven and hell. I said, yes. And by the time I said yes, All I would know is that we are gone. How we traveled, only God knows. But we were gone. And when he went to show me heaven and hell, he gave me three chances. He said, I will show you heaven three times, and I will show you hell three times. 
So the first time, he went and showed me heaven. And you know when the Bible is talking about mansions? That there are mansions in heaven? The Bible is real. There are mansions in heaven. And there are gates in heaven. And every man and the woman of God. Hear me, men and women of God. Every man and woman of God, you have work to do when you qualify to go to heaven. Only if you qualify to go to heaven. And I remember when we had gone and reached the gates of heaven. The person that I saw, I saw two men of God. That is in heaven. In hell, I saw a lot of men of God. I have to be honest and tell you the truth. I saw a lot of men of God in hell. And I saw men of God in heaven. Some of them that are not dead yet. You know, as we are here, everybody is on a road. This is the question that everyone has to ask. What kind of a world am I on? We are spiritual people. That we should remember all the time. That we are not just physical, we are spiritual people. But what kind of a world are you walking on? And I remember, when we got to the gates, I remember someone who is related to me that passed on about two years ago. Saw him on the gate. He called out my name. He said, your time is not yet. It's not your time yet for you to come here. You have come here to come and get the message and go back and tell people. So the moment he said that, I didn't want to hear, honestly speaking, because their gates were so beautiful, and I wanted to get through those gates. Then, who I always call, in my testimony, I call him my friend, and the Bible says that Jesus is our friend. He looked at me. He didn't say any word, but he just looked at me. And there was no physical uh, communication. But I said, in the spiritual, we were talking. The most surprising thing I ever saw was to see we, we know Billy Graham we know Billy Graham we know Miles Monroe yeah. these are the two people that I saw manning the gates I'm not saying that the only people that are manning the gates but God will reveal himself to you with the people that you know And I looked at him, who I called my friend Jesus. And I said, I know that. And all what he would do is just smile at me. And I saw Miles Mono manning a cat. And the most amazing thing behind him was his wife. I said, wow. I said, now here we go. We have married couples here? Do we have married couples here? Yes. If we have married couples here,
do the best. The way you know your wife here, if you both qualify, you will know her when you qualify to go to heaven. The way you know your husband on this planet earth, when you qualify, you're gonna know him. Love your wife. And wives do what? Respect your husband. And marriage is between a man and a woman. Are you hearing me? That is what God knows about marriage. I am not scared to say that in here. And I'm not scared of saying anywhere else. Because I was sent to go and tell people. Real marriage is between a man and a woman. So commit to each other. And let God be the center of your marriage. And I said, wow. That's just one of the things that he showed me. Took me to hell. Just cut the story short. I have a lot to say. And share with you. Took me to hell. When we went there, you know the Bible talks about the bottomless pit. Exactly how the Bible explains hell. That's how hell is. You know whereby there are people in hell who are burning in hell of fire. You know, here on earth, when we burn something, what happens to it? And there's change, isn't it? There's a change to that thing that you burn. There's nothing like that in hell. It is endless pain. Endless pain. The second time I was given the opportunity to go and see her again, I said, I am not going again. I was crying like a baby. God, that's the reason why he has commissioned us to go out there. And when, we are to, when he's talking of going out there, it's going out there. It doesn't matter who they are. God has a purpose for their life. And it is time for us to be bold and tell people about Jesus. Because yes, we can make everything beautiful when somebody dies. But your question should be, where are they going? Your question should be, where are they going? Because we know that it's endless. <laughs> Where are they going? So I just want to encourage you today that stick up with Jesus. Nothing should move you. And when I mean sticking up with Jesus, I mean sticking up with Jesus with no compromise. Not Jesus today, tomorrow, another thing. Stick up with Jesus. He is the answer to everything that you're looking for. If he gave me life after 67 minutes, what is it that God cannot do? If I was declared vegetative, she's going to be vegetative. She won't be able to walk or talk. What am I doing now? Stick up to Jesus. And let nobody, nobody lie to you or put you down or put you off or tell you something to say you're not good enough. Tell yourself, I'm good enough. Amen. As long as I have Jesus, Amen. I'm good enough. Amen. Because 
there's a lot of things that are going on in our life and we're thinking, am I really worth it living? Let me tell you something. Life is precious. You are worth it living because that purpose that God has put upon your life is not over yet. So cherish. I just want to thank you all of you. The story is too long. And it's too long. It's too long to share. It's too much to share. 21 days was quite a lot. Every time I'm writing things down, and I thank God that the Spirit of God is there to remind me and remind me and remind me. And I know that together, we're going to spread out this gospel. Amen. Fear not, God is with you. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. God is so good. There's a lot that needs to be shared, but um, by the grace of God, we, we are one who will be sharing as we go around. Amen. Amen. So um, let's just get committed to what God is doing. There's a lot, there's a part that I'm supposed to share. She doesn't know much, but there's some things that I used to see, very funny things that the eleven thing that she mentioned, she never wanted anybody near her, including me, even the hospital knew about this. I was confused, I didn't know about until she came out of hospital. So there's a lot of things to share, but we found God. But God in his own mercy, he reminds us of these things, we can get connected. Amen. Let's close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you, Lord, and we glorify you. Holy Spirit, do what the Lord has sent you to do here. We cannot do anything without you. Lord, allow the person of the Holy Spirit to be revealed in this place today. In the name of Jesus. We appreciate your presence, our God. Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven to us. We thank you and we glorify you even for the testimony we've heard today. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to continue from where we left last time. I was here some few weeks ago. And man, we well, thank you so much for having me again. Amen. We're going to continue from where we left last time. And... Um, uh, I believe that uh, the reason why Jesus keeps revealing himself like that is because he wants to continue on the message of restoration. He wants to bring the priest to a place where we can begin to do what God has ordained us to do in the end time. Glory be to God. Because when you please, as a priest in the Lord, you will depart from the position where God has put you. You lose your position, you lose your assignment, you lose your provision, and you also lose your inheritance. So we want to get that place. Amen. Now, in order to get that place, let's look at the prayer of our Lord, our, our, our Lord Jesus Christ. It says, uh, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, that is thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Glory be to God. So our commitment is to allow the will of God take place on earth as it is in heaven. Now, every time Jesus spoke about the kingdom, there were some things that could not stand in the presence of the kingdom. And this should be our life commitment. Glory be to God somebody. Can I have a witness in the house of God? Amen. Now, what is the kingdom of God? I know we've heard a lot of uh, uh, explanation about the kingdom of God. Is it just a theoretical concept? Or is it something that can be revealed here and now? Is this some that practical you can say? It? Because every time Jesus would come in a place and speak about the kingdom, there were a few things that could not stand in the presence of the kingdom. Now, here is the man who lived in the presence of God. Here is a picture of God. Here is uh, God coming in the flesh. And every time he speaks about the kingdom, sickness could not stand the presence of the kingdom. Every time he comes and speaks about the kingdom, sin could not stand the presence of the kingdom. Every time Jesus comes and speaks about the kingdom, demons could not stand. Okay. Demons will completely land scared and will be begging him to let them go. Why? Because he was a carrier of the presence of God. 
uh, Moses makes this very available to us in Exodus chapter 33. He was dealing with people who were steep named. And he knew that in order for me, thank God bless you, in order for me to get to bring this message to these people, I need something. So if you read the book of uh, Exodus chapter 3, the people were steep named, you know, meaning they, they could not take the word of God on board. They could not respond to anything that God was doing in that season. Then Moses prayed, Father, let your glory be revealed to me. Allow not your presence to depart from me. If your presence doesn't go with me, I'm going nowhere. So today, we have a lot of, um, a lot of believers who are um, praising God, but in the flesh. How do I know that? There is no results. Praise be to God. Are we ready for something new in this place? Amen. I don't care whether it's 10 minutes. I believe God can do something in a second. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Amen. 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 Because every time God wants to do something, He checks. He checks. Because we say that the Holy Spirit is a person. Now, the Holy Spirit is to you and me who Jesus was to the disciples. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit is to you and me who Jesus was to the disciples. Jesus with the disciples, they, were not, they, were, they didn't have the Holy Spirit. He would send them two by two and they would do miracles. They were not filled yet. Amen. So the role of the Holy Spirit cannot be ignored in this end time. We need to get to a place whereby we, we qualify this. Glory be to God, somebody. Because if we... <laughs> The, the, the Holy Spirit is a person that we've heard very much. Glory be to God. Now, the Holy Spirit is not a message. Let's not make mistake. The Holy Spirit is a messenger. He's the carrier of the message. Now, Jesus, when he came, we heard the word Emmanuel, God with us. But when G the Holy Spirit came, is God in us. He needs to be carried. Are we getting something out of here? Amen. I want us to walk out of this building today. Never the same. If there's anything we believe in God, it has to go in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory be to God. So every time Jesus comes and speak about the kingdom, some things will not stand. Sickness will not stand the presence of the kingdom. Demons will not stand. The sin will not stand. The poverty will not stand. Death will not stand. So when I was told that your wife is gone, I was reminded of what God spoke to me. Then I began to remind him of his promises. Amen. Amen. I went into Exodus chapter 20, I mean, to, uh, Second Chronicles chapter 20. I began to remind him of his promises, like how uh, Jehoshaphat began to remind God. Are you not the same God who promised your friend Abraham? They're going to be there for them. So I began to remind God of his promises. And I was reminding God for his promises, much as they give me something very contradicting, but I stood on the word of God. And I believe you did the same man of God when you went through the process of time. So what I'm trying to say here is, we have a God who is able. We have a God who is waiting for you and me to stand and begin to maximize what he has given us in the end time. Amen. Let's open our Bible to the, to the book of Luke chapter 17, uh, verse 21. Glory be to God. Remember, the Holy Spirit is not a message. He is a messenger. Glory be to God. When Jesus came, we are told that he is Emmanuel. God with us. But when the Holy Spirit comes, he is God in us. So wherever these courts go, if I'm connected to God, I go with him. So Moses discovered this. He was dealing with the most difficult people. They, were still, they would not take the word of God on board. Then he began to cry. If your presence does not go with me, I am not going. Amen. If your glory does not go with me, I am not going. I'm telling if we begin to show up in the things of God and minister on the things of God without the Holy Spirit, we are missing the whole concept. Glory to God, somebody. Can I have a witness the house of God? Amen. Praise be to God. Because I want us to get to a place where Jesus becomes real. And Jesus will never be real to us in the realm which is so physical. We have to go in the realm of the spirit for Jesus to be real to us. Exodus chapter 17 verse 20 and 21. Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, 
He answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observations. Glory to God. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. I'll read this again. Now, when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, so they wanted to know because all they hear about him is about the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom. Wherever it was going, the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom. The... So they said, when would this kingdom come? Now he's responding to them. But there's no way you and me can do anything more significant outside the concept of the kingdom. I've seen people, I've, I said here last time, I've seen people worshiping God in the fresh and no results. That's why I don't believe it anymore. There's power in prayer. No. There's power only in the presence of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Only the prayer that is prayed in the presence of Jesus. Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation. Nor will they say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. The Holy Spirit. There's something we've got to get to know. To begin to change our position, our stuff in our lives. Amen. The kingdom of God is within you. Then he said to the disciples, The days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, Look here or look there. Do not go after them or follow them. Praise be to God. You know what Jesus is saying here. The, the kingdom of God, you're not going to, you're not going to come in this city and say, well, where, where is the kingdom of God? You're not going to see any physical structure. The Bible says he will not come with any observation. So the question is, how is this kingdom of God going to come? Because in the prayer of our Lord, he says, your kingdom come. Your will be done right here as it is in heaven. There has to be a reciprocal, they have to be connection. Amen. Praise be to God, somebody. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. When Jesus came, when Jesus came, I'm repeating these things just for the sake of somebody to get over what I want to say in these few minutes. When Jesus came, the Bible says we were told that Emmanuel, God with us. But when the Holy Spirit came, Amen. The Bible says it's going to be within us. Amen. Now, the people want to know when the kingdom of God will come and how it will appear. They say the kingdom of God does not come with observation. Rather, you're not going to see it with your physical eyes. Now, this calls for the journey of faith. Amen. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So when the kingdom of God comes in here, it will not come with observations. People are not going to see physically that the kingdom of God has come. Glory be to God. Rather, there's not going to be any, 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 anybody say, let's look for a building or an office for the kingdom or a structure. No. Glory be to God, somebody. Amen. Amen. Because the kingdom of God is an eternal reality that can affect any present situation here and now. It's something eternal. So when Apostle Paul was talking to Timothy, Timothy, I have been in there. I fought a good fight of faith, but now I want you to fight yours. But the way you're going to fight yours is by laying hold of eternal. Yes. All right. He says, listen, I have been in there. I fought my fight. But now I'm talking to Timothy as my student. Fight a good fight. Meaning it's a winnable fight. You don't say a good fight to a fight they're going to lose. Fight a good fight of faith. But the way you're going to fight this fight is by laying hold of eternal life. Now, the kingdom of God is an eternal reality that can affect any present situation. Now, if we are in the body and nothing is changing, the kingdom of God hasn't come yet. Amen. Amen. 
if we are in the body of Christ, so we call the body of Christ, nothing, nothing is changing. That's a sign that the kingdom of God hasn't come yet. Because the kingdom of God is an eternal reality. The kingdom of God is the government of heaven. The power of God is the ability of heaven. The, 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 the glory is the atmosphere of heaven. So when the atmosphere of heaven takes place in here, when things begin to happen, that's the atmosphere of heaven. That's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a demonstration that the kingdom of God has arrived in Coventry. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. And listen to me, let's get to the point. The point here is God has spoken to me. As a son, I want you to take this supernatural message in this end time. But there's no way you can take this supernatural message in the fresh. You've got to get in there. And there's no way you can take yourself in here. This is why Jesus says, look after me. Look up, go for me. Because when we go to Jesus, it's Jesus who gives us the faith that will help us to find the kingdom of God. Glory be to God, somebody. So he says, the kingdom of God will not come with any observation. People are not going to see that here it is or there it is. Amen. Praise be to God. It will not come with any observation. Why? But the kingdom of God is within you. Amen. It's within people who are connected to me. Hallelujah. It's within people who understand the concept of God because it is an eternal reality. It is endless. And this reality can affect any present situation here and now. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. So it is the government of heaven. And there's no way we can access the government of heaven outside the presence of God. We need the presence of God. So the Bible says, They that shall dwell in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the mighty. Amen. Remember, they that shall yeah. dwell. Dwelling and visiting are two different words. We're very good at visiting. We're visitors of God. When we visit God, you don't tend to see the kingdom. Praise be to God, somebody. Amen, somebody. Amen. So when you talk of the Holy Spirit and the kingdom, the Holy Spirit has got to be within you. The kingdom has got to be within you. So there must be something connected between the Holy Spirit and the kingdom. So when Jesus, the disciples, came to him in Matthew 24, they came to Jesus and tell us the signs of the angel. How will it be? How are you going to see? How are you going to see? How is he going to come? He says, listen, it's a mystery. It's something so profound. It's in, the, it's, it's in the current of my father. I don't know this. You don't know this. But let's stay in the kingdom. Now the Bible says the kingdom of God will not come with observation. Now here is the crew. Without the presence of God, how would you see not the kingdom that is within you? Can I have a witness in the house of God? Without the presence of God, how would we know that the kingdom of God is within us? How would I know that God is speaking to me right now to lay hands on the sick to recover? How will I know that God is calling on me to do something that nobody has done, but God wants me to do this? Praise be to God. Amen. So you find that Christians were working so hard in the flesh. We're doing a lot of things in the flesh. Listen to this. The kingdom of God does not come with observation. Meaning you're not going to see it with your physical eyes that there is the kingdom of heaven. Because it is within you. Amen. Now Jesus who, who, who um, um, reports to the Father wants to speak about the kingdom to us. Because the Bible says when the Holy Spirit will come to us, he will be a witness. It's a legal term. In legal term, when you're a witness, you stand in a box. You testify about somebody. And you verify the truth about that person. Amen. Glory to God, somebody. That's the law of the Holy. He testifies about what God, Jesus, spoke to us. Not only he testifies, then he verifies the truth that this is what was spoken. That when they said death, God will bring life. Amen. He verified that truth. Yes. Glory to God, somebody. Hallelujah. Can I have a witness in the house of God? Hallelujah. So the kingdom of God is an eternal reality. 
Amen. It is not just a, a theological concept. It's beyond theological. So we've got to get to a place and begin to know the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. We've got to know how he works. We've got to know how he lives. Because if he is a person, the Bible says he coexists and he's called equal to the Father. And everybody reports to the Father. When Jesus came, he prayed to the Father. When he came, he spoke about the Father. When he was going, he says, it is good for me to go. And I will go. My Father, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, whom my Father will send in my name. Everything has to go through Jesus. Who will send in my name. When he come in here, he will teach you all things. All means everything put together with the exception of nothing. So I don't know what it is you are believing God for, but when this comforter comes, he will teach you all things. Amen. Even the things that were not recorded in the books, Amen. because he will teach you all things. Amen. Those things are recorded in the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I believe it's the house of God. So we are talking of the eternal reality. And if you want this city to change, we've got to transition. Yeah. We can't stay on the cross. Yeah. The cross is the demonstration of love. But we've got to come into the resurrection. But the resurrection is the it, you connect to the power. Now, when it comes to the power, Jesus said he commanded them not to depart, but to wait for the for the power. He commanded look at the look at the revelation. He commanded them. So the power of the Holy Spirit is a command. If a believer does not have the Holy Spirit, forget about changing your family. Forget about changing your church. Forget about changing your city. The Bible, he commanded them. It is a command. We know what a command is all about. When I say go, it is a command. The Bible, he commanded them. Jesus knew they cannot do the work of the Father without the Holy Spirit. Because I report to the Father. As I, as I report to the Father, the Father will send the Holy Spirit in my name. And when he comes, the Bible says he will teach the church all things. All things is all things. So when you stand on the word of God, I said with God all things are possible. You are speaking from a spiritual standpoint. This is the confidence I have in God. If I ask anything according to his will, he hears me. You are speaking from a spiritual standpoint because that's the nature of God. So it is an eternal reality. Apostle Paul confirms this with me. He says, Paul, Timothy, fight a good fight, but by laying hold of eternal. Don't let go. Eternity. Amen, somebody. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. So the Bible says he will teach you all things. All means everything put together. With the exception of nothing. He will teach you all things. Amen. So he's been there all along. He will teach us all things. So Jesus was answering these people. They wanted to know how the kingdom, how the kingdom of God will be. How is it going to be? And he said to them, it is not going to come with any observation. Because the kingdom of God is within you. The day you make that decision, say, God, I am tired. I have been saving God, but things are not changing. But I think it's high time for me to change now. I think I've been visiting God, but now it's time for me to dwell. Amen. And who Amen. keeps you in there? Amen. The Holy Spirit. Amen. You can't stay in there without the Holy Spirit. Because your flesh will jump out of the fire. Your flesh will not understand. I was, I was teaching on church this morning about the preparation for the ministry. Because I've come to know through revelation that there's been a lot of betrayals in the, in, in, the, in the work of God. Because we haven't taught the people how to prepare for ministry. Because when we are disloyal, we are foolish, God will kick us out. But that will not stop us serving. That's why we see the scriptures in the Bible, Jesus will say, well, they will say, well, I used to cast out demons in you, and he says, I don't know you. Because when you're foolish in the way you handle the anointing, you're foolish in the way you handle God, God will never trust you for anything. So we've got to qualify these things. We've got to agree together that the kingdom of God is within us, but it is an eternal reality. It has to be demonstrated here now. We can't stop by the cross. The cross is the demonstration of love. Jesus said, I love you. That's why I died for you. But he wants us to transition to come into the power. So when it comes to power in Acts chapter 1, 8, Jesus commanded them not to depart, but to wait for the power. 
Glory to God. So the Holy Spirit is a person. Amen. 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 I believe that all of us have feelings. Amen. Amen. There are times you feel happy. And there are times you feel disappointed. There are times you feel good. There are sometimes you feel angry. You feel hurt. It is the nature of us. It is the nature of the Holy Spirit. There are times you feel angry. And he withdraws himself from the church. Amen. He has feelings. He is a person. Amen. Look at the pronouns. The Holy Spirit. Who my father will send in my name. He will teach you. Look at the pronoun. He will teach you all things. He is relational. He wants to relate to the church. If the church stays away, he pulls away. Amen. So men of God who discovered say, revive me Lord. Then I will call on your name. There is no way we can call on God and have the results if God hasn't revived us. He said, draw me in, then I will learn after you. Amen. There is no way we can take ourselves by praising, by preaching, by singing, and we'll see God doing it. We've got to get to a person by us and God. God knows that right now, I am within her. Alleluia. I am within him. Glory to God, somebody. Amen. Can I have a witness in the house of God? Amen. Can I have a witness in the house of God? Amen. So the kingdom of God is an eternal reality. Amen. Because when we begin to understand and know these things, then Jesus suddenly becomes real. Amen. When Jesus becomes real, suddenly things begin to happen. Things that you never used to handle, you start handling them. Things that you never used to, I mean, you, you didn't get close into doing them, you start doing them. Why? Because now Jesus becomes real. Then he saturates you. Your life in him and him in you. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God somebody. Amen. Glory to God somebody. Amen. And we cannot do this outside the presence of God. Amen. But there are two realms of existence. There's a spiritual realm and a natural realm. If we stay in the natural realm, we should forget about seeing God moving in a special way. And I believe God is doing something in this church. Amen. I believe God is changing some things in this place. Amen. I believe God is changing some things in this place. I believe God is changing some things in this place. Amen. Amen. Let's read another scripture then we'll close maybe because of time. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. We're going to learn two scriptures or three scriptures. Because God wants to bring us back to a place where our father, Adam, departed. A place we can be effective. Amen. God gave him a place. But the moment he lost the presence of God, he was out of that place. And that vision of restoration has been going on and on and on and on. And he wants you and me to continue with the vision of restoration. Yeah. A priest has to get back to a place he can have their gown back. Yes. Yes. A lot of us, we don't have it. Yes. And God wants to get it in it. Because yes. you're not just a mere person. Yes. You're so fearful and wonderful made before God. Yes. And I want you to know this. Yes. So you can stand on the word of God and say, Father, you will declare that if I pray, things will change. Yes. And begin to pray for your children. Yes. yes, they may be having a spell right now. But you know through the word of your mouth they will be back soon. Amen. Come on. Come on. Amen. You know the enemy is not happy with us. No. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs that there is a place that no vouchers know. Amen. Amen. There is a place that no fowls. Fowls are demons. No. There is a place. Job 28. There is a place. What is that place? The secret place of the Most High God. Yes. And there's no way you can access that place if the kingdom of God is not within you. Amen. You're going to be there till blood and come out. Amen. The Bible says very clear there's a place that no vouchers know. A place no alien fowls know. A place nothing, no demons know. That place. Unfortunately, a lot of Christians haven't found it yet. And God wants us to find it. Amen. Amen. Let's look at how God loves us. We're going to read two scriptures. 
Second Timothy 1 verse 8 and 9. If you can have somebody read for me so you can cut off time because I know time is okay. I keep telling Apostle, if it was in Africa, we will extend it one hour. And here, let me do what our culture demands. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 8 and 9, please. 1, 8 and 9. The Bible says, Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us, with a holy calling, mm. not according to our works, but according to his own purpose mm. and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Praise be to God. Amen. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. You know, when you are in that place of God, where the kingdom is within you, you're not ashamed of the testimony. Yeah. Amen. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings of the gospel, according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with his holy calling. It is a holy calling. Amen. Who has saved us and called us with his holy, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Amazing. It was given to us before we were born. Jeremiah makes it very crazy. Before I was created, before I came in my mother's home, I was called. It is a holy calling. Every image of God is a candidate to be used by God. It doesn't matter their position right now. When we're crying for revival in the city, we don't choose. We cry for revival of everyone. And the Bible says he is, it is a holy calling. So God has called us, but not all of us are choosing. Now, my question has been, if I am in the image of God, what makes me not to be chosen? It's the process. It is a holy calling. It's the process. The disciples were walking with Jesus every day, but they wanted to know about the kingdom but the activities of the kingdom are taking place right in their eyes but they want to know they want to observe with their eyes but jesus said the kingdom of god will not come with any form of observation Amen. because it is within you and there's no way you can have the kingdom of god within you without the holy spirit Amen. and there's no way you can be sustained in the presence of god if the holy spirit is not activated in you can I have a witness in this house today? Are we ready for something? Because I want to release something today. Because I believe God is about to do something that is never done before. Amen. Somebody you are believing God for something and there's a change in the atmosphere. Amen. Because we are talking about God's business. This is what our Father can do. He is the provider. He is the giver. He can do the impossible. What the level impossible God can change the story. He can change in changer. He can change what people that said this is not on. But God is able. He has called you. With a holy calling. It doesn't matter your spiritual position. God has called you with your holy calling. Now let's read another scripture to just qualify this. Because I've come to know that many are called. But few are choosing. Choosing. Because when God has called you, He will guide you. He will look after the anointing. He will follow you through to see if you can be chosen. He will follow through. He will make sure He monitors you how you handle yourself in the eyes of God. He will make sure He monitors you how you handle the anointing. Moses saw this as God, let your presence not depart from me. So God will follow you to see if you can really, really be trusted. With the choice. Joshua, we cannot make it outside the presence of God. That's why God wants to bring the priest back in the garden where things were destroyed. The enemy is so good at reviving our generational case. Much as we know Jesus came, but he revived the generational case for us to stay natural. But God wants to supernaturalize us. 
to stay in a place where you can begin to produce results. Hallelujah. A place where you can begin to change the impossible. A place where you can begin to, be, to make things happen in this Amen. end time. Amen. Amen. Let's see the last two scriptures, then we're going to close from there. Amen. Uh, second Timo, second Peter, second, uh, second Peter 1 Peter 1.10 and Proverbs 23 verse 26 because I want to leave you to us Second Peter chapter 1 verse 10 mm. the Bible says mm. therefore brethren mm -hmm. be even more diligent to make your call and election sure mm. for if you do not you do these things you will, you will never stumble therefore brethren be more diligent to make your holy calling and your election sure. Amen. To be diligent, to, 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 to have that care with consciousness. Amen. Glory be to God. When you are diligent over something, God demands for you to have the sense of care, the sense of duty. Amen. You've got to look after the anointing. You've got to look after your calling. And you've got to look after it in the presence of God. Glory to God, somebody. Amen. Therefore, brethren, be diligent. And the Bible says, if you do this, you will not stumble. Do you know the reason why people confess today that I'm sorry they keep doing that they will do that thing tomorrow again? Because we haven't reached that stage yet. A lot of Christians, they will confess, Father, I'm sorry, I'm not doing it. But in two days, you do it again. Then you come again, Pastor, pray for me, I'm sorry. Then you do it again. You know why? We haven't reached there. We don't need no pastor. We have reached that stage. What if your pastor needs help from you? How are you going to help him? Because he's a human being as well. Amen. Like what? Dad and mom went through. There's a time they need. First of all, when you go through a tough time, you know, sometimes you just need people to say, we're going to make it. Amen. 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 You just need somebody who says, no, 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 no. It's going to be great today. Amen. And that is enough. Hallelujah. To take it in new levels. God is not looking for people who are going to look down, people who are going to lift you up. Amen. 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 Praise be to God. Amen. Let's read this scripture again, the last scripture again. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Proverbs 23, 26. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 26. Yes, Lord. Bible says, mm. My son, mm. give me your heart mm. and let your eyes observe my ways. That's the first step for us to take when it comes to the kingdom of God to stay within as God departed. He says, My son, give me your heart. Meaning, God says, I want your heart to be my property, I want to own your heart. Give me your heart. And let your eyes observe me. That's the first step into greater exports. Give me your heart. Amen, somebody. Amen. Because in the prayer of salvation, we say, if I believe in my heart. Now, we're not talking about the physical car that pumps blood into your system. I'm talking about your spirit. My son, give me your spirit. Oh, it means literally. Amen. And let your eyes observe me. What I'm about to do. Let your eyes. Because if we are to walk by faith. Faith operates on advanced knowledge. Amen. Because if your eyes observe things from a natural standpoint. There will be no faith in you. Amen. Because faith operates on advanced knowledge. Faith operates on imagination. You cannot use reasoning on faith. Because ministry is not a career where we're going to create some mathematical reasoning then come up with something. Ministry is supernatural. 
Change is supernatural. This is the reason why Jesus, he spoke only twice about church in the Bible. But he spoke about 145 times about the kingdom. And this is what he says. This message of the kingdom, this, he didn't say that. Why? Because he knows that there will be that, that, that. But he says, this message of the kingdom, which is within us, must be preached. Amen. Must be put in the end will come. So God says, it is a holy coin. Look after it. Be diligent. Take care, take care of it. Look after this. Be diligent. You know, prove out to God that you're ready for it. And when you do that, you know stumble. Can I have a witness in the house of God? Amen. Can I have a witness in the house of God? Amen. So God says, this is a holy calling. He says, give me your heart. Amen. Because man is the spirit. Man has the soul. Man lives in the physical body. So when God said, let us create man, he's not talking about this house. This is just a vehicle that takes man to all over the world. When he said, let us create man, you and me, God was speaking about the spirit. That's man. That's why Apostle Paul says, man of God, I put my body under. You know what the person was saying? I, the spirit. I put my body under subjection. Who was saying I? The spirit. But the body is no man. The man has the power. So, the spirit of a man has the intuition, the power to know something. Understand something immediately that nobody teaching you. Says, you know what? Now it's time for change. Amen. I need to adjust. Amen. I can't live like this anymore. Amen. Now it's time for transition. I can't stay like this anymore. I've got to go for something greater. Because I've come to hear today that the kingdom of God is within me. So I need to move on. I can't be in the same place. I need to find something greater. Because man as the spirit had the intuition, the power to know something, that somebody is speaking something which is convicting me. I've got to change. Man as the spirit, he has the conscious, the voice of the spirit, to know that what the spirit is speaking to me, I can agree with it. Apostle Paul says, I tell you the truth, I don't lie. If my conscience agrees with what is spoken today, that the kingdom of God is going to be within me. Amen. That's where the Holy Spirit is. Hallelujah. The two have to marry. Mm -hmm. I have a witness in this house. Amen. Glory to God, somebody. Hallelujah. God has called him a holy calling. Mm -hmm. And then when you get to get to a place where you're conscious and your spirit there enticed with God, then it's easy for you to begin to commune with God. Mm -hmm. Jesus becomes real in your situation. When people think you're going to break, you don't break. You rise up. Amen. You mount on something greater. When people think that this is the end of you, you don't end. Because now you don't operate on the physical anymore. You operate with higher knowledge. That's the purpose of faith. Amen, somebody. That's the purpose of faith. Jesus saw these uh, setbacks, these shortfalls. That's why he says, seek me first. Because he knew if you go for faith, you're going to faint. He says, seek me first and I'll give you faith. 